and what's up, Long Beach? I'm your host, Julia Goldman, and you're listening to Season 4, Episode 6 of Artist Banter, a daily 49er original podcast that delves into the many manifestations of artistry within our local scene. If you follow along with the local music coverage with the Daily 49er, you may have read Alex Grick's um, work before. If you wanted to introduce yourself, I am joined by the lovely Alex to co-host with me today. Hi, I'm Alex Grichuk, and I do write artist interviews, concert reviews. I really like the local music scene, so if you want to keep up to date on that sort of thing, follow my stuff at Alex Grichuk, G-R-Y-C-I-U-K, on Instagram. Yeah, it's just incredibly fitting that you're coming on to join me. Um, and this is your first podcast appearance, right? This is my first podcast experience. Very exciting for me. Thanks so much for being here today. Um, and then would you like to introduce our guest today? Sure. We're here with California Groovy Grunge Indie Band, Arizona Avenue. Before we have a snippet of your music, would you like to describe your music to somebody who perhaps has never heard of your stuff before? <laughs> yeah, I'd say we're like like you said, Groovy Grunge, it's like modern rock. Um, it should get you feeling good. We want to make sure that all our listeners are. That's awesome. Do you just say that you have any like influences that are similar or? I mean, I feel like... The, the Foo Fighters, like Arctic Monkeys, some, I guess there's a band called Movements that we like a lot that we listen to. So yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a mixture yeah. of stuff in there. Cool. All right. Thanks, you guys. Here's a snippet of that. And that was Arizona Avenue. So if you guys could go around and introduce yourselves, um, names, instruments. Uh, I know one of you guys is students, so major year, um, stuff like that. My name is Justin. Um, I play drums in the band. Uh, I'm 20 years old. I'm a student at Dominguez Hills, not Long Beach, uh, majoring in music performance. I'm a sophomore there. My name is Matthew. I am the bassist of Arizona Avenue. Um, I'm a second degree uh, black belt. Um, I don't go to school. My name is Lucas. I'm the lead singer of the band. Um, I work, I'm the director of a soccer club in real life. And then, you know, over here we do this. We had this hair ages. Uh, no. <laughs> my name is Ethan. Uh, I'm the lead guitarist of Arizona Avenue. Uh, I'm, I go to. <laughs> Cal State Long Beach, I'm a music major, and uh, I'm 19 years old. Thank you all for introducing yourselves. How would you guys say that you all came together for Arizona Avenue? Is there any significance in the name Arizona? Uh, yeah, so I was living in a place called Westchester, which is near LAX. Everyone mm -hmm. gets confused when they ask, like, where did I live? They thought I meant England. I was like, no, it's a place in LA, small, but it's there. But I lived on Arizona Avenue, and these boys would come to the garage that we that I had in the house and we'd um we'd record and, and, and sort of rehearse for the for the first few live shows there and made a ton of music there over the last sort of year and a half. So it seems like a bit of a cop out but it was it seemed appropriate for, for what we were doing. So yeah. We're not from Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify. Everyone asks that when they find <laughs> out the name. They they say who's from Arizona. Oh that's it, yeah. 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 I mean, do you guys want to explain how you guys? I kinda... think I think you should explain it. <laughs> okay, um, so it kind of goes a little far back, um, but it was my junior year of high school. Uh, I didn't really know who Justin was, uh, and we both had the same guitar class, and we were kind of just like acquaintances sitting there. And then the way it started is, is our teacher didn't show up, and he hopped on a drum kit, and I played guitar, and I was introduced to like playing with other people. And we played Everlong. Yeah, we played Everlong. <laughs> and then, Classic. yeah, since then, I've gone over to his house. And then, you want to explain how you you and Matt? Yeah, yeah. And then, well, me and Matt uh, go way back. We've been on a lot of bands together. And uh, it's, it was our plan for a long time to move to this area and pursue, pursue music. And when we got down here, we very quickly ended up meeting Luke. He was a solo artist at the time looking for a backing band. And... We just felt that we all worked really well together and we made some songs together that we really liked and we felt that it made the most sense to just be a band. Yeah, and then I came around about a year later 
Yes, uh, Ethan wasn't there. In the, yeah, I wasn't that, there. That, that, that I was not there in the beginning because I am younger. And he was still in high school. I was still in high school, <laughs> yeah. Um, but then it was kind of like I kept sending them like some demos that I made back home, and they were like uh, enjoying it and stuff like that, and I wanted to like be a part of it because I saw some of the things that they're already doing. Um, and then basically decided I'm going to go to school down here so I can kind of be a part of this as well. And then, you know, here, here we, we are. are. Here we are. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. And you said back home. Where is back home? Uh, so I'm from Gilroy, California, and so are the other two. <clears throat> Technically Hollister. Okay. <laughs> I'm from Gilroy, too. And I'm, I'm from London, England. Yeah. Very by, cool. Really, by way of Atlanta. I was in Atlanta for like three years. As a collective, what specifically drew you to the groovy grunge rock? Is there something that was instrumentally very appealing, something about the scene? What specifically? I feel like, or well, at least Luke and even Justin, we kind of started with rap. So that kind of like more rhythm, uh, I don't know, dope feeling, I guess. I, I I don't know how to explain it. We wanted to kind of figure out how to tie that into rock. That way, I don't know, have, have a little more a little more rhythm into it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I think we, like, I was producing stuff back when I was, uh, before when I was an indie artist, I was making rap. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it was it was kind of a case of bringing a new feel to rock music. Um, obviously, a lot of people have done that recently with sort of like the punk scene changing a lot with trap drums coming involved and stuff, a lot of that. But we were trying to maintain the um, instrumental feel of rock music while giving it a slightly just modernized feel, I think, is what we were looking for. That's, That's yeah. exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, um, at least for me personally, I like, cater to this genre um because there's obviously i listen to a lot of genres but this one specifically like there's so many different ways to invoke emotion through the music and it just like such a song that will sound hard can make you feel something else other than just like what matt said this is dope <laughs> and i think it's really cool to have something that's like sort of heavy but also you could be very impacted by how it sounds yeah, i think luke said it right it's like we our music is we want people to move to it right so that that grooviness is is we're, we want people to move to our music. It's actually because Matt's bass lines are so sick. We just had no choice but to be groovy. Yeah. If you've never seen Matt perform live, you, you'll, you'll understand when you do come to a show, you'll see what we mean. Um, so we kind of like established um, how you guys form together, um, you know, coming down here from the Bay Area or other places. Um, and I just wanted to hear about how this like transition to Southern California has been for all of you as a band, as people, um, how the scene has been. Okay. First. Yeah. So, I mean, I moved here in 2018 and at the time I was still making rap music. Um, oh. So I was still producing my own stuff and I was pretty much solo and I was doing everything myself. I went to music school for a semester. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't performing live at all. And then obviously COVID hit. So I stayed inside like everyone else, like mm -hmm. uh, worked with a couple of producers. Uh, and then during that time, I met a guy called John Berklin, who's the drummer for a band called Bad Wolves. Um, and he put me on to like, some rock producers and making rock music and from there I just kind of got hooked and we made a bunch of demos and then that's when kind of the, that music got sent over to them through mutual friends and stuff and they, we then decided like I, I knew I needed a, a live like band for this and I don't play instruments yet so I was like I need I need some backup and then that's when they appeared. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah okay I'll take it. Um, yeah I I came here right after high school. Um, I graduated in 2022 and then um, came down here with Matt. We're roommates. Uh, we were roommates back in Gilroy. Um, and it's been, it's been really cool. Um, a lot of stuff has happened um, much faster than like we were expecting to. Um, we came down here and we were kind of just expecting to like have fun and like make music just like in our apartment, just by ourselves. And then just, we ended up meeting Luke and within like the first two, three weeks that we were down here, we were rehearsing to go play in Seattle, which was pretty cool. Just weren't expecting that at all. Like going from like the biggest show that I'd, I'd ever played was in my dad's backyard to playing for like a couple hundred people was, was pretty fun. Um, and so, yeah. I'd say for me, it's a huge adjustment. I kind of, Unlike these guys, I just got here. Uh, <laughs> I got here in July. Uh, I think it's it's a pretty big adjustment because Gilroy is like really small. You can get from complete opposite points of Gilroy in ten minutes. Uh, so it's like a very like 
tight community and then moving all the way to SoCal is like, there's an absurd amount of people here. <laughs> and it was just like, like Justin, it was like the biggest show that I had ever played was in a backyard. And My dad's back here. Yeah, <laughs> with with me and Matt. Yeah, <laughs> with him. He wasn't there. <laughs> no, 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 I was in downtown Gilroy for like yeah, yeah. fifteen people or something like that. And then like within two months of moving here, it was like oh, we went on the the Hoot of Dunkett tour yeah. and went to within a few months of moving to SoCal, go to Seattle, go to San Francisco, go to Hollywood. Like it was like such a like big slap in the face all of a sudden. So it's like. Not just like dipping my toes in, like moving away, like six hours away from home. It's just like, okay, you're here. We're moving. We're gone. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a it's an adjustment, but it's a very exciting adjustment. Yeah. I think I think for these lads, like like I said, like I feel like I kind of threw them in at the deep end. Um they all they all kind of just I was already doing stuff and I was like, Look, you guys are super talented and awesome performers and awesome musicians and I was like, Let's just let's hit the ground running and let's go. And so with everything like you know it was it, it just made sense a lot of it just made sense but it's, in terms of adjusting to the, the scene and stuff a the rap scene was very different to like the rock scene and the, the underground scene it feels far more supportive in the rock scene and there's far more of a community feel to it i feel like once people lock in with you they really do support you um and we've seen that and at the live shows like we have some people like we now tend to have people that aren't necessarily just friends or like acquaintances they're people who've generally just found the music and be like we want to be at shows we want to be at where you're performing or, or streaming your music which is which is awesome um and not something you'd expect in a big city like la because i mean we're not the only ones trying to do this so it's it's really nice to see that sort of wholesome community feel especially stuff like playing the fighter show the other the other week um that was just a wicked experience for me personally like as much as playing the big venues is cool the house party and the like energy there was insane it was it was wicked great that kind of goes into my next question <clears throat> we're gonna ask a little bit about you know, what does it feel like to perform? So from the past shows that you've played, perhaps that were a lot smaller to Seattle and most recently to Fightow, how has it felt for you as a band to perform and possibly as a solo artist first and then together as like a group? Yeah, I mean, like I started doing shows in Atlanta in a predominant in the scene where, you know, white boy, I stood out pretty, pretty hard. Um, white British yeah, guy. Yeah, white, white British guy making rap in Atlanta was quite something. Um, <laughs> opened for a guy called Azizi Gibson in 2016. It was like 800 people. It was my second show ever. I had no, no right way. to be on that stage. Um, it was terrible. I was awful. I thought at the time I was incredible, but looking back, it was dreadful. But um, but it was cool. Like, that was always my 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 thing. It was like, just run headfirst at things and figure it out later, like, in terms of, yeah, I'll mess up and I'll mess up again now just as long as I learn and progress and improve and keep going. Um, I think that's been the key thing. And there's no there's no feeling like these guys will agree. There's no feeling like performing live and seeing people get excited to your music and sing the lyrics back to you. Like it's insane. It's, it's a wicked feeling. And it's also one thing to to perform by yourself versus performing with like your best friends, you know? Yeah, like yeah. that's, there's nothing like it. Yeah, I mean, going out there and like, whether it be like we're playing at like a bar versus like playing like a show like we did like Troubadour, right? It's it's just, it feels the same. Cause it's like, you know, maybe there's different, like we're nervous for different ones, but when we're on, on stage, it feels the same, at least for me. Like, no, no, yeah, I agree. we're always just having fun. And if, like, if, yeah, it yeah. feels like we're back at the garage, like in Arizona. Like I remember those, those first rehearsal <laughs> sessions. Avenue. We're not from Arizona. Arizona. Avenue. 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 No, Avenue. Arizona. we're not from Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put words in our mouth. Um, <laughs> that, that first rehearsal with these guys um, was, like I'd never played with a live band or live instruments. It was just like I was straight away. I was like, "This is, this is what I want to do." Like it was sick. Yeah. It up. There's definitely no, no greater feeling at all for me. Like it's you literally get to do the best thing ever and play on stage in front of people. You can feel like the energy from the crowd and like it's literally like a giant warm blanket from the crowd. It is so it's such a concept, and you're just doing like well, at least for me it's like what I love the most, and you're doing it by like with your best friends. It's like you get to go do the best thing in the world with the best people. It's like, it doesn't really get any better. That's so awesome, you guys. I'm really happy that you can share that together, but also share that with, you know, the community of people that come and watch and support you and probably feel it for themselves, like for that very reason to come support. So, um, yeah, I wanted to ask you guys, um, you know, for you, Ethan, as a music major at Long Beach, and then for each of you with um, your own careers and lives outside of that, um, how do you kind of like manage your musical journey with Arizona Avenue um, with, you know, your responsibilities of daily life? And like, what are some frustrations that have come with that? So for me, uh, definitely Arizona Avenue takes a lot of time and it's 
what I want to do with my life. So the way I kind of manage school is by not going. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Cal State Long Beach. Um, but honestly, like people go to college to like further their what they want to do with their life and stuff like that. And obviously, I'm taking music courses that are like helping, but a degree doesn't really change like the path that I'm going towards anyway. Uh, it's a terrible, sorry, mom. Uh, it's a bad answer, sorry, but that, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, you, yeah, it's, it's definitely tough to manage at times because everything gets jumbled all together. Mm -hmm. And then if like, I'm sure most people have like some sort of procrastination issue and it's horrible for me. So I'll just put things off and then it piles up and it's like, oh, I have to do all of this by this date. And it's just, it's a lot, but it's definitely fun though. I think it's, it's comfort in being uncomfy. I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> very transparent. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you said, it's tough. It's it's but it it comes down to like this is what we want to do. We get the most enjoyment out of this. It's it's one of the things we looked forward to in the week. We were just saying like walking over here, we haven't actually got to hang out, just hang out because we've been so busy working on music and mixes and rehearsals and get ready for this tour and stuff. Um, it's nice to just it's it's nice to just kick it together. But we are so driven, all of us. It we make the time we make it possible we make make things happen no matter how busy we are in our own lives and i think that's the the thing that sets us apart from a lot of other bands in our sort of at our level is that we make a lot of sacrifices to make things for the band happen and i think it's why you know we we kind of trying to set ourselves apart in that way so, yeah it's tough to balance everything especially for me i do um all of our mixing and engineering and all of it is outside of scheduled band time. So that that does take up a lot of my time. But, um, you know, it's it's okay. Like, I, it's something I'm willing to do <laughs> because I, I, one, want to become better at it. And I see it as, like, becoming, sharpening my craft. I think that's what that expression is. Um, <laughs> But, um, but like, yeah, but also like being, uh, being in school is, is definitely very time consuming, especially being a music major and not having done my lower division courses before becoming a music major, I'm taking like a lot of classes, <laughs> like a lot. So, but at the same time, all of the classes that I'm taking are music related. So I really enjoy it and I don't feel any... I don't feel like burdened, like I'm missing out on my free time, even though all my free time is going to all of this. It's it's okay because it's what I would want to do with my free time anyways. So that's awesome. So all of you guys are obviously working really hard. What are your what are you guys working towards? What's the ultimate most amazing goal in the end for the band? I think a lot of people look at us like we're crazy when, when we say this, but like genuinely like stadium tours, like we want to go the distance. There's no point for us, at least. We've, we've, we had a conversation when I started with these two. I was like, look, that's my end goal. If it aligns with yours, then let's do this. And this is something you want to go and pursue. Look, if we don't make it, that's fine. But if the aspiration and the desire is there, then at least if we fall short, we're falling short of something incredible, which is still way cooler than falling short of just being like, oh, we're happy to play local shows. And that's as far as we're going to get. Like we'd rather aim high and, and if we fall just short, then I think we'll still be in a pretty cool place. Um, so yeah, I mean, we want to be huge. We want to be massive. Like that's yeah. that's the goal. Yeah, definitely, definitely. What Luke said about like stadium arena tours, that's definitely like up there as like the top goal. Uh, but like as a personal goal, I do want like I want to get to a place where the music that we're making is making a huge like emotional impact on the people that are listening to it. Because I know at least for me, the way I listen to music, I want to be able to like positively impact somebody with the way we wrote a song or like the feeling of a song that could like benefit somebody and go on stadium reading tours. <laughs> yeah. But you too. Yeah, man. I I want to I want to make a classic, you know? Like I want 90 years down the road one of our songs is still playing, you know? That'd be kind of Never cool. forget who you are. That'd be cool. Never forget, you know. <laughs> that'd be cool. I just like playing drums. <laughs> I just want to play drums. I drum up and then like keep playing drums later and then keep playing drums even later after that. It sounds like you guys all have like your own personal ambitions, but the kind of like shared same goal. Yeah. I think that's I think that's why we work I want, so well. I want to play arenas too. Yeah. <laughs> I think, Amen. I think we all agreed to put the band first and like it's very difficult. Like 
especially coming from working by myself and I know Justin works by himself for a bit as well. Um, learning to work within a group and learning about each other. Like we've, we've known each other only for a couple of, le- a couple of years. Like it's still not that long in terms of the grand scheme of things. Like they've, they've been friends for ages and they've known Ethan and stuff, but learning about each other and learning how each other works and what doesn't work and, and finding the best way to make, make each of us productive and get the best out of each other is also a, a, a skill in itself, let alone making good music and putting on good shows. Like being able to operate within a unit is, is a skill that we are crafting and honing in as we, as we go as well. We're learning like each and every day, which is, it's a fun experience. It's good. And it's our, our personally, like it's an honor and a privilege to get to stand next to these guys and, and get to perform. Mm. Yeah. It's inspirational. Um, like the, so many of like the artists that like have on there and have on here and stuff. Um, like they're, they're, um, they don't think that they're like entitled to like those kinds of things. And it's, they're so incredibly humble about their craft. And um, I'm not insinuating that you guys aren't, but it's refreshing to see the confidence. It's refreshing to see like the ambition and drive and. Um, yeah, I think, I think in music, I mean, anyone who chooses music or anything in the entertainment as a career path, you have to be like somewhat delusional because <laughs> you know, I mean, the numbers are against you. Like you look at it, like there's no guarantee you're going to make a living off it. There's no guarantee you're going right. to get anywhere in it. You have to have a level of delusion and, and perseverance to get there. I think all my favorite artists talk about it in interviews and they're like, yeah, people call me crazy, like regularly because I was like, I want to go do this, this, this and regular people, not regular people, but like, you know, people who aren't making music, people aren't making music, sorry. Like people aren't making music and trying to aspire to that. Like it's hard to understand sometimes. And, and, and it's not, it's not, a. Uh, it's not it's not a bad thing they don't quite get it but it's but it's like it's it's our little delusion to live in and our little dream to to have yeah it's very like it's very like entrepreneurial it's like the it's like someone saying like oh i want to go compete with nike you know like that's like what we're doing within music like it's it's like it's a crazy goal to have but it 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 very rarely just happens without trying i mean there are some people who say that that's what happened but i i, I think that that's very rarely the case mm-hmm. And then, you know, for now and everything, talking about your long-term ambitions for now, um, what should fans anticipate next from you? Um, where should they go to keep up with it? And like, this is just your opportunity to, yeah, put that on the table. Oh, okay, okay. Tour, we're going on tour. What are the dates, Justin? May 11th, we're playing in San Luis Obispo. And then May 16th, we're playing in San Francisco. And then May 19th, we're playing at the Moroccan Lounge in Los Angeles. And then after that, we have a couple special events. You can't come to those. You can't come to those, though. <laughs> they're private. <laughs> yeah. They're just, for, they're just for friends. But you're our friends, but like a different type of friend. Yeah, we have to see you. We don't see you, actually. You can only see us. Well, also we have music coming out pretty soon. When's that coming out, Luke? Um, yeah, we've got, we've got we've, I mean, we're sat on a ton of music, which is a, a, a wicked position. 125. Yeah, something like that. It was a, there's a lot of demos in, in, the, in, the, in the drive, um, but we're working on Waterfalling an EP uh, starting around May, just after we get off tour. So at the end of May, we're looking at kind of dropping our first single off that and then releasing pretty regularly throughout the rest of the year. And then just continuing to churn out like a ton of music because I mean we have a lot we're sitting on and we want to share it with everyone. So yeah. that's the that's the goal. There's no point in just sitting on a laptop. For um those the shows that are coming up and your future releases, where should people go to go see it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So on Instagram, it's Arizona Avenue Official. That's the same everywhere. I think TikTok, Facebook, YouTube is just Arizona Avenue. Uh, we also have a website which is just ArizonaAvenueOfficial.com. Yeah. Um, all this all this is in the the Instagram bio. Yeah. Uh, you can find the link tree and then all of the other links will find everywhere. But Spotify. 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 Well, yes. Yeah, if you want to actually hear what we say, it's all good and well. You're oh, looking yeah. at us and being like, oh, they have a nice Instagram, but go listen to our music. And if you if you like it, then yeah, absolutely. Jump on board. Alrighty. As we're wrapping up our podcast episode, I'd like to ask if you guys have any last words, any last thoughts, little snippets you want to include at the end. What do you, what do you, what are your guys' goals? <laughs> we don't have enough time for that. Oh, okay. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about like do- you talk about like trying to make in the music field. We're in the same like yeah. <laughs> yeah. same We're grinding thing. Together. Yeah. Any people you want to shout out specifically? Any things that you're excited for? Yeah, thank you. Definitely thank you to my parents. I mean, I'm sure you guys probably want to thank your parents. Thank you guys for having us. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. Us. Thanks, yeah. you guys. Yeah, I say thank thank you for having us. Um, 
yeah arizona avenue like we're out there everywhere and um yeah if i i'd like like i said our music we share it to help you know uh, help people but inspire people and, and get people moving so it's kind of the kind of vibe come come be our friends yeah Come get, yeah, get to get to know us and jump on board with what the the what we got going on. Alex, it was so awesome co-hosting with you. Thank you for joining me. I feel like it was a little long overdue, but I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is super cool for me. I love interviewing new bands and getting to know their story and being on a podcast is awesome as well. So I'm excited to see what you guys will release in the future and I will be at your next show. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Perfect. Guys, thank you for having us. Appreciate yeah. it. No, thank seriously. You. Shout out. Yeah, a very special thank you to our guest, Arizona Avenue, um, for being here today. Um, if you want to keep up to date with their future releases of music and performances, follow them on at Arizona Avenue Official on Instagram. You can check out their current music if you look up Arizona Avenue on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and Amazon Music. <coughs> and thank you everyone for joining us today. If you want to hear more from Long Beach's own contributors of our art and music, check out our website, daily49er.com, and our socials at daily49er. We appreciate you being here. Take care and see you soon. Bye. <laughs> See you later.